travel gone far. We will be photographing 10 of the most popular spots for cherry blossoms in Tokyo. Including a cemetery with over 7,000 tombstones. Tombstones? And a park that housed the city's biggest cherry blossom tree. And so much more. All while trying to challenge ourselves to capture unique shots at every location with this long telephoto lens. We timed our arrival on the first day of bloom, so we just gotta show up, take some amazing photos, and enjoy the rest of Japan, right? <laughs> You are wrong. Travel gone. Travel gone. Long. The hunt for cherry blossoms. Our first stop is at Sakura Dori in Shibuya. Spot one. This location is called Cherry Blossom Street and has a beautiful winding path underneath an abundance of pink flowers. Except there is just one problem. There are no cherry blossoms. Well, the whole time we were back in the States, we're just like checking the cherry blossom forecast. And it says it's gonna bloom earlier. So we're like, oh my God, we are missing the bloom right now. And we show up here at Shibuya, but there is barely anything right now. On top of that, it's gonna be rainy all of next week. Wow, it's in full bloom. So this terrible luck is just following us everywhere that we go. Now, the thing with cherry blossom is you gotta time your trip just right because full bloom typically lasts for one week before they become luscious green spring trees. Quite luscious. However, because of the impending rain that's gonna be going on during the whole week of peak bloom in Tokyo, the strong wind and downpour could potentially wipe out those beautiful pink petals. Some of you know me. I'm a sunshine and rainbow kind of photographer, all right? I'm not into those moody, brooding gray tones. Yes, there is something, but... You need bigger blossoms than that. That's just pink with brown dirt on this canvas. Failure. Looks like we'll have to come back to Cherry Blossom Street later. But luckily, the next spot we're about to head to is filled with cherry blossoms, ironically in a place that houses the dead. Spot two. Yanaka Cemetery. Ooh, spooky! That is so sick. Wow. That is so nice. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So it's not really that spooky. Yanaka Cemetery is not only one of the largest and most historic cemeteries with over 7,000 gravestones, but it almost feels like a park with a hint of labyrinth-esque element. A spot that you can cut through as you commute to work or school, or simply even get lost while you take a nice casual stroll. Sakura Dori. Oh, look at that! They have a Sakura Dori here too. This looks like a job for the 1 to 400. That's a big boy. The reason why we're bringing this giant behemoth of a lens is because we want to take photos that feel different from what you would normally get from a smartphone. A telephoto lens like this compresses the background, bringing objects way in the distance much closer to perspective, giving us a nice backdrop for any subjects that so happens to be walking by, or even resting in peace. Ah, you see what I did there? Okay, I like this shot right here. While some smartphones have crazy zooming capabilities, nothing beats using a dedicated telephoto lens and a proper camera combo. Like the Sony 100-400G Master mounted on my ZV-E1. Snaps, children crossing the road, children crossing the road. Ooh, and a taxi too. Nice. It simply gives us crispier results and natural background blur. Or what the Japanese call it, bokeh. Success. People come here to celebrate life because they are celebrating their loved ones that have passed. But we're also coming to view cherry blossoms, which represent a new start. It's a very fleeting moment. What and else is fleeting is our life. life. Because the cherry blossom gods giveth, and the cherry blossom gods taketh. Sumida Park. Spot 3. Any first-time Tokyo visitors will likely have the famous Sensoji Temple on their bucket list. But if you add a 15 minute walk to your itinerary during springtime, you'll be rewarded with some sweet pink views. So not only do you get some nice cherry blossoms here at Sumida Park, but also front row seats the iconic sky tree. Is what we would like to say, but unfortunately, as our Vong luck goes, Sumida Park is not ready. Failure. This would be so pretty if there were Sakura. Unfortunately not. 
So, what's going on here? We're following these forecast websites, we're arriving on the first day of bloom, but the cherry blossoms are not ready yet. What gives? Come on, little guy. Please bloom. Now, we have filmed at Sumida Park before, way back in 2019, so enjoy the Vong's personal stock library archive while the present-day cherry blossom hunters explain the difference between first bloom and peak bloom. Take it away. When you're checking the cherry blossom forecast, first bloom is when the buds are just starting to open, and apparently it takes about a week or so before it reaches peak bloom, which also only lasts a week or so, depending on the weather and winds. Unfortunately for us, this looks like the last day of good sun and clear skies because for the rest of the week, it's going to be nothing but clouds and rain. Yoyogi Park. Spot four. Despite the hazy gray cloudy weather, Jason and I persevere, hoping to salvage any shots we can get. We exit out of Harajuku Station to a conveniently nearby Yoyogi Park. Hey, boo boo. Okay, so you're going to stand right there. You want me to stick my head in? Yes, yeah, stick your head in. Okay. Now, you're gonna let the flowers envelop you. Okay. All right, now pose. Okay. Maybe put your hand to your face, like, mm, the flowers are caressing me. The flowers are caressing me? Now, cloudy weather isn't terrible. In fact, because of all the clouds, we actually have some nice soft lighting, which photographers often take advantage of for some nice portraits. Kiss the flowers. It gives off very even lighting to our beautiful faces. <laughs> Look how amazing this photo is. Ready? Three, two, one. Bam, look at that. <laughs> What's interesting is that some of these cherry blossoms are more whitish pink than they are pink pink. So when you're photographing them in dull weather, they can sort of blend in with the gray sky. Let's try angling it down a bit more. Ah, there we go. The dark background helps these flowers stick out. Success? The cherry blossoms are low-hanging fruits. You can just be literally right next to it and take some photos. I'm gonna get pink eye from this. Ah, uh, ah! Uh. No, no, no? Failure. As low as these cherry blossoms are, and apparently my joke as well, they pale in comparison to what awaits us at our next destination. Spot five. Rikugian Park. Located north of Tokyo lies the city's biggest weeping cherry blossom tree. There's a really long line. So far, we've been seeing a moderately tame crowd, but it looks like our time hunting for cherry blossoms in Tokyo's top spots is about to change at Riku Gien Park. This is by far the most people that we have seen and with a sign that literally says, hey, best time to see, come on in. We can see how this place can manage to attract so much hype. And I promise you, you will always underestimate the popularity of fluffy pink trees. So, does the city's biggest weeping cherry blossom tree disappoint? That's the biggest cherry blossom tree I've ever seen. I think it's huge. There's some pure chaos here. A bunch. It is kind of cool to see a lot of happy faces coming here, getting together with family and friends, and just look at pinkness of a tree. You see, for Japan, cherry blossom signifies the welcoming of spring, which also means the start of the new school year and the new fiscal year for businesses. So really, happy times for anyone at any stages of life. The start of something brand new. To celebrate, locals would often participate in cherry blossom viewing activities, and they have a phrase in Japanese for this called hanami. And with sites this pretty, it often attracts international travelers as well, who are also on holiday around this time. So what we're trying to say is, be prepared to be anywhere with everybody else. What would be really nice if there was some wind to kind of blow some of that cherry blossom petals across the screen. I think that would look really cool, but it's not a windy day today. Have I just talked something up? That looks so good, you caught it. I never thought we would actually get some of the wind to pick through, but wow, that's gorgeous. Now, I gotta be honest, while these portraits with the cherry blossoms are nice, 
I have to admit, they don't exactly say we are in Japan. For all you know, we could have faked this entire series in Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. Just kidding. But hey, perhaps a potential future season of Travel Gone Bong? Anyway, our whole purpose is to capture epic cherry blossoms in Japan, so we're gonna need some photos that actually scream Tokyo. And I think I have just a spot. Zojoji Temple. Cherry blossom flowers, oh. Spot six. Just located southeast of Roppongi lies Zojoji Temple, one of my favorite spots in Japan even outside of any season just because it's so symbolic of what Tokyo is. Traditional temple meets modern Tokyo Tower. And when you add cherry blossoms into the mix, we have traditional meets modern meets mother nature, baby! <laughs> Except there is just one problem. Cherry blossom flowers, oh. You fool! Did you really believe it's sunny right now? Did you really believe that we have escaped my Vong luck? You just got bamboozled by another one of my illustrious Vong stock library archive from 2019 again. Oh no, the flowers are too dark. Unfortunately, the sky is grayer than my entire Uniqlo drip, causing what little diffused light we have left to darken way before sunset. I'm feeling a little disappointed in the location. It's a beautiful location, don't get me wrong, and the cherry blossoms are in full bloom, but I think just because of this overcast weather, it just all looks kind of grayish. All right, I think it's a wrap here, so let's hope we have some sunny conditions this week. <sighs> And it looks like we have another sad, gloomy day. Things are really not looking good for us right now. Let's face it. Photos of my face with a cherry blossom is going to be worth less than a McDonald's Happy Meal toy. Maybe it'd make a nice bathroom art, given that it would go above the toilet. But with only four more locations left, will we ever get blessed with some of that precious warm sun during our last few days in Tokyo? Only time will tell. But for now, let's try to move on to something a little more exciting. Nakano Street. Spot 7. Today we'll be going to Nakano Street for one specific shot. A train passing by on street level with the cherry blossoms perfectly framing the most epic shot. Alright, so this is a shot here where we can get the train sort of going by and we have the cherry blossoms that we can frame up. Ugh! And we don't want just any trains, right? Preferably we want the one that's not going to be also gray like the sky. No, not that one. Uh, wait for it. Nope, still gray. No, not that one. Whoa, whoa. Here I come. Oh, here I come. Ah, that's, that's the one. The one. Here's a hot tip for all you uh, first bloom photographers out there. If you're struggling with gray weather photography, always remember to look for colors. A bit wide, but thankfully, we're taking this with a 33 megapixel Sony a7 IV, enough for us to zoom into this photo a bit, and with a little cropping here, a little cropping there, and it should look something like this. Success. Spot eight. Chidori ga fuchi. You know, that yellow train is quite symbolic for us, because today, the yellow sun is back. Sadly, this is our last day in Tokyo. Before we embark on an epic road trip to hunt for mountainous cherry blossoms, two more episodes you don't want to miss out, so subscribe to be notified when the next episode drops. <clears throat> uh, yeah, but uh, right now, since it's our final day, I want to take Vivian on a perfect morning date at Chidori Gafuchi Park. I can picture it now. We're going to rent a rowboat. We're going to paddle underneath some cherry blossom trees. We're going to take some amazing Instagram shots. It's going to be perfect. Yay, I'm so excited. Unfortunately, all right, we gotta go get the boats right now because I think they run out. There's no more boats. No! And it's at 6.30. No! Aww. No! That's the last group of people for the day. So there's a cutoff time apparently. And we didn't make the cutoff time. Well, 
There is no use crying over spilled milk because the Vong luck isn't over yet. We still got two spots left. No, three actually, because we got to go back to Sakura Street. Anyways, uh, let's see what else is on the list. Picnic lunch with our friends at Weno Park. I think you guys know how this is going to go. Ueno Park. Spot nine. Having a picnic underneath cherry blossom trees is an incredibly popular harami activity. However, it has become so popular that there are no spots left for us to even set up our picnic blankets. Wow, this is so pretty. There's so many trees. And I, I feel yeah. like in full bloom. Ah, who's a cuddle? Wow, this is a lot of people. Oh, look, and the clown are back. Hello. Yes, these are our photography friends, Nico and Arian, who are also fellow passionate cherry blossom hunters. And they have also just landed in Tokyo today, so they definitely want a strong cherry blossom portfolio at the start of their trip. All right, so what are your top spots? So far, we've done Shinjuku Gyoen and now Ueno Park, but it's so crowded. With picnic lunch a bust, we are quick to re-strategize what to do next. <laughs> There's a lot of this back and forth going on. Hang on a second. It's a bit far from where we're at right now, but there's a famous riverbank that's one of the premier cherry blossom spots in Tokyo. Naka Meguro. A view with 800 plus cherry blossom trees planted along the river. Surely, we're bound to get some good shots. Right? Right? Oh, Let's hope so. We're with Jason and Vivian, so I'm not so sure. Hey, we're fine. <laughs> Nico knows our Vong luck a little too well. Naka Megiro. Spot 10. There we go. So we made it to Naka Meguro and it's not ready yet. It's not like full, full, but like I will we'll make it work one way or another. Oh, I failed you, I'm sorry. Well, what can I do, Jason? Now, while they're not in full bloom, when clumped together, it can actually look pretty good. It looks fluffier and fuller. But unfortunately, not only are we failing our challenge to get unique shots, but I'm also failing to deliver my promise to Nico and Arion on epic cherry blossoms on their first day in Tokyo. And this being the last spot on this list, we simply can't end this video without something epic. So while there's still some daylight left, we decide to gamble on this final location. Back to where we first started. One last time. Back to Sakura Street. Spot one. We have returned. Again. Oh, that's nice. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my lord. Oh. Yes, yes, yes. The answer is yes, 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 yes. Yes. Right. yes. Whoa. The cherry blossoms are ready. Unfortunately, for one last time, we have pure chaos. You see, we wanted to capture the long winding road underneath the cherry blossom trees. Maybe have a couple taxis go by, Vivian crossing the street, Beatles style. Like the Beatles? But it's looking like we're getting more than what we bargained for. Jason, what is with you and your luck with trucks? With traffic at its peak and everyone standing around being mesmerized by the pink fuzziness, our cherry blossom hunters are gonna have to get a bit more creative. But not with this man. I'm pretty sure everyone here is causing a huge traffic jam. This is truly travel gone wrong. Don't judge me if it's under. <laughs> and what did I tell you? You will always underestimate the power of pink fluffy trees. Whether you plan your entire trip to see cherry blossoms on every corner, or you just so happen to stumble upon them at the right place at the right time, it's hard not to be enamored by these short-living pink wonders. And it's only getting better and better with some nighttime illumination. Look up. What was once a brown dirt canvas has now turned into a beautiful watercolor painting filled 
with full bloom pinky goodness. Oh, that's hmm? so good. Thank you, Nico. Perfect. When asked if Nico and Ariane would like to join us on our epic one week road trip hunting for cherry blossoms in the northern part of Japan, here's what they have to say. No, I'm done. Bye. I don't want your bad luck anymore. Did he just say, I don't want your bad luck? Well, looks like it's just me and you, babe. Oh boy. If you enjoy these episodes and want to support the channel, hey, consider buying these prints or simply drop a one time super thanks donation. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next Travel Gone Vaughn. Peace. Travel Gone. 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 Thanks for watching.